is Adam Andra. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to come <laughs> Yeah, dude, what do you have to I say? Yeah. That was uh, like number one every time I searched anything about you. I guess a lot of people <laughs> thought something happened. <laughs> All right, we'll move to the next one. Hmm, I think lots of people think but I am, and I'm not. Yeah, I thought I was curious about that once I saw that. So you're not vegan? I'm not vegan, and I'm, I don't, I can't say that I tried. But there, I've been on a trip maybe for two weeks where I was vegan, and I definitely felt like I missed a little bit uh, of the energy. And but I mean, it could be like a long term. I I, I basically I, I don't think that I'm the right person that could be on a vegan diet and performing the same way it's it's for sure like eating meat two times a day every day in a week is not good for anyone and i think my way of eating meat and other like dairy products for example or eggs is like yes maybe one animal product a day even if it's like meat or dairy or or egg huh i've actually always wanted to know this also do you uh do you take like protein or anything like that like protein shakes or any supplements or anything uh yeah for example into my into my breakfast i do some uh, i put like uh, some uh, protein protein uh, into into my oatmeal for example okay cool yeah i think i know a lot of people do but you're you know you're like the gold standard for climbing so everyone's always like does adam andre do it so i think knowing you know like some of that stuff is always kind of fascinating all right yeah. your uh, next one <laughs> <laughs> Um, my answer is because I'm not strong enough to do it well. Oh, so you think eventually somebody might be able to silently do all of <laughs> silent? Absolutely. Really? Sure. Okay. Because I see you on stuff and I just can't imagine it gets like the human limit is much higher. You know, it just, it's crazy sometimes. No, I think there is still quite a lot of potential and I mean, that. If you compare to the other sports, I think there's also like potential to train better, to have better training facilities. And if you have like small kids now that have the approach to the best training facilities, I think there is there is definitely potential to to get better more than in other like traditional sports where like the training has been maybe pretty streamlined. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. So I made that one. That wasn't a real search. I'm sure you could tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next one. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> I, I don't know. I swear I did not make that one. That was that actually came up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually don't know how long it is. <laughs> I think my, my mom has a quite a long neck, so I think oh, it's so it runs in the family. Do you think it helps with climbing? That's what I was wondering as well. <laughs> I I don't think so. I mean, there was a study like some one biomechanical engineer thought like it could give me like a advantage in like using all of my body as kind of a leverage. So like every time I make a move, I go a little bit backwards with my neck. And then as I do the move, oh. I go up again. So it's like always creating like a little bit of a momentum every time I do the move. Damn, I'm jealous which, now. Which I agree. I think when I think about it, yes, I do it. And which in, in the end, you know, when we are talking about the, the height in climbing, the height, like where your head is ending is completely irrelevant in climbing. The relevant uh, factor in climbing is your arm span. Okay. And how high you can reach the uh, from your feet on your, on, on the ground. Yeah, because you're like yeah. what 185 uh, centimeters. 186. 186. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then you have uh, you what like one, do you have like a 186 uh, ape, or wingspan? More or less, maybe one centimeter more. Okay. Yeah, well, I found that interesting because uh, when, you know, uh, I heard, I think you were talking about that you have a pretty even ape index. I assumed just because how good you are that it was going to be like you were going to have like really positive. But I think it, it's actually really bad for climbing to have really? a huge ape index. 
Interesting. Especially for lead climbing. I think it's impo- it's impossible to have a good endurance if your arms are super long. You can gain a lot of power, but you will never be resistant. And I don't know anyone who is like a really who is like bigger arms than bigger arms than, than me and still has some endurance. So I, I have a plus thirteen centimeter ape index. <laughs> so you validated <laughs> now when I, I can complain now. That's why my endurance is so yeah, bad. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, you, you know the statistics just shows pretty clearly. Interesting. It's it's actually an advantage to be quite short if you're a climber. That's that's so I'm like handicapped basically. <laughs> All right, we have the the last one. Is Adam Andra? Uh, that's hard for you to answer this. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> are you gonna be cocky or are you <laughs> you're, like, you're damn right i am yeah i mean i've always focused on like being as good as i could possibly be in like all sorts of fields in climbing yeah so I, I think unless you like say a certain field of climbing it's impossible to tell so like you're not the best speed climber in the world Mm, I think who is the best bowler is maybe easier to answer, but maybe you would have to say like best outdoor bowler, which obviously I'm not. Okay. The best indoor bowler, obviously I'm not. You don't you don't think so? <laughs> no, 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 for sure. Not. Who would you say is the best indoor bowler? Do you have a person in mind? Uh, yeah, I would say Tomoa Narasaki has been the most consistent bowler, okay. competition bowler in the last years. I uh, I saw he did an outdoor trip. I don't know how recently mm-hmm. it was, but because uh, he went and did some like pretty iconic boulders, and he flashed some like really yeah. hard, high grade boulders. And I think a lot of people thought yeah. that he was like like only good at gym climbing, and that it didn't translate very mm-hmm. well. But he, I, I mean, nowadays. And it's true for bouldering especially, but I think a little bit for outdoor, uh, for lead climbing as well, is like the climbing on the competition is so complex nowadays. And if you are doing well on the comps, it means like you're such a good, talented climber with such an overall, um, overall skills that you are going to be inevitably really good on rock as well. Yeah, that, that's what I kind of thought. Where it, it's, yeah. it's so much of this. It's designed to be similar to outdoors, so there's no way you're not going to get somewhat stronger. I mean, there's, let's say on the comp, especially in bouldering, there's like, let's say, more elements, like, you know, the coordination and all the dynamic stuff, which you don't really need on the rock. But there's still, like, all the slabs and a little bit of more, like, a regular climbing. Uh, where you still have to be really good and like if you are if you suck in step climbing you will never win a comp it's just impossible (laughs) (laughs) no it's not that i would love my knee pad so much (laughs) that's definitely not like it's still if i can Let's say if there is a route that I don't knee bar, I don't bring my knee pad, you know? I think it's just because of silence. I think since silence, it's just been a meme on the internet, the, you with the, yeah. the knee pad. But but that's an interesting topic because for, I, I, I like knee bars for resting, but I'm definitely not kind of a climber like Dave Graham, who is like a knee bar master when it comes to like technical knee bars. Really? Like, no, no, no. I, I, because also my ch- my style of climbing is like going fast yeah. and like relatively dynamic and i don't like to spend a lot of time in like one place and trying to like fit the shitty knee bar in the best <laughs> possible way yeah and in the end i rather just make one maybe more powerful move instead of like taking three seconds to like make your knee bar like stick to some kind of non-existent really flat feature yeah uh so in that that case i don't really use it so i would say the percentage of moves where like dave is using knee pad knee bars and me is like completely nowhere else well uh, this is a good segue then do you um do you cover knee bars a good amount in your uh, new course that you're doing as a pr- yeah, quite a bit. You do? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. I myself am actually very interested in uh, what I don't know much about the course. Actually, I just I have the mm-hmm. insider knowledge that it exists, and you're working on it yep. right now. But 
Yeah, so like last summer I met with Magnus and uh, he asked me if I could be the first one who would uh, make the online course on his platform. I was really excited about their plans and about also even like seeing the potential that this could be really big in climbing and, and climbing I think is a perfect sport to make all because like climbing is a physical sport, but it's so much technique involved, which for sure you can learn so much just by climbing yourself. But if something, somebody really good is trying to explain all sorts of different technique, I'm pretty sure you will progress just so much faster. So we were just trying to brainstorm like what kind of topic I could have. Uh, so I think my vision of climbing has always been more like technique as maybe even more important than power or at, at especially like if you're not like super super strong and professional climber that's when it gets even more important so the whole climbing course is really focused on like how to climb as good as possible with the amount of power that you have yeah. in lead climbing so one of the messages of the course is like climbing is so much about the details and there are so many details you can like really cover and think about and yeah so you're known for you, you cramming your feet into some pretty small shoes so the the next mm -hmm. memes are about this <laughs> I think uh, everybody right. saw that the video where you were how, how many sizes do you go down when you wear climbing shoes it was quite a few so it depends I mean maybe 2016 I would still wear regular shoe 44 and I would wear Python or Squama in 38 <laughs> now I'm at 40 so it's four sizes less Okay, so you eased up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, also it depends on the model. Maybe in Squama and Python, I would still be 49 and a half, but I don't climb with these two models anymore. But uh, yeah, 40 feels like quite comfortable now. But And it feels kind of like ridiculous how I could like squeeze into 38 and a half or 38. Uh, I think I learned to kind of take the advantage of a little bit softer and bigger shoes to kind of feel the footholds rather than just really relying 100% only on the structure of the climbing shoe itself hmm. and like my feet and toes would be like completely dead and for example like <laughs> yeah. one of my few mistakes I did in my climbing career was maybe uh, in my teenage years climbing with shoes that might have been a bit too too small huh. and possibly too stiff okay. for, for like my weight back then and the climbing style that I, I was using them for. Yeah. But the choice of the climbing shoes was much smaller back then as well. It's a bit easier now. That looks so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still don't know if this is real or not. I can't tell if it's photoshopped or someone did this. I, I mean, I did a head bar a few times but never in an angle that steep yeah that's what makes me think it's fake because the core tension to be that relaxed is insane <laughs> i think it would be pretty hard for me because my neck is so long <laughs> so long so there will be like a long leverage to like be really try really hard <laughs> yeah, with my neck yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it looks to cool though my neck though yeah do some yeah. of the like wrestling Training. <laughs> All right, the next one we have. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it really depends on on climbing gyms. I, I wouldn't really think of it as a rule. Um, I think in some of the gyms where I'm training, especially when it comes to lead climbing, I would say like on siding 8A or 13B is, is even harder than on siding the same grade on the rock. But I would say, yes, in general, and especially more for bouldering, it, it could be true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the standard <laughs> in general, what people expect is lower in the gym. Like you, if you get on yeah. a hard V4 in the gym, you get people get frustrated because they don't expect it to actually be hard. 
And I think it, it really depends on like where the gym is located, like which town it is, and if there are like different gyms, and it's like all the competition competition between the gyms. So if there's like a bunch of bunch of different gyms, and like one gym would have like really hard grading, and one would have really soft grading, I think just eventually the gym with really hard grading will soften up anyway. Yeah, <laughs> grading ball problems just by like taking a color or something like this is it's kind of lame in my point of view <laughs> i think it takes a bit of fun away yeah <laughs> you know and i really don't think that it's as motivating for the people just to send like the red tape or blue tape as setting a certain grade and i think like there is a argument that some managers of the gyms they think like oh for the beginners it's like completely unrelatable unre what is like B, B1, B2. But I think it's actually kind of cool for beginners to kind of immerse into the grading scale. And yeah. it kind of makes them feel like, oh, proud. I know about it. I know what it means. Yeah, I, I just started climbing a few years, probably like four years ago. And that was like the most fun part of climbing to me was I realized that you could move up each grade. So I was yeah. so excited to get like V3 and I was like going and hangboarding so I could get V3 eventually. And what do you think about <laughs> grades that do like really big, like when they're like blue is V1 to V4 or like- I absolutely hate it. You do? It, oh, that's like, awesome. I do too. I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> then they don't even have to grade it because yeah, I think yeah, like yeah, grades exactly. are super important when you go climbing or, or especially training. They should give you the information of like how hard it's going to be. Yeah. And, and so like if you want to warm up you want to warm up on something like fairly easy and you don't want to get into the situation that it should be easy and it's really hard yeah and if you've got like 20 different ball problems in the same range that are completely different difficulty wise it's so annoying <laughs> i'm so glad <laughs> i always complain about that and now i can i'm validated so i can <laughs> tell people all right well the next one's in the same the same uh, category <laughs> yeah i mean it is also the fact that for example if you compare v4 on kilter board and v4 outdoors even though like v4 outdoors could be steep v4 on kilter board probably requires much less of a technique and it's like if you have enough power it feels super easy if you don't have enough power there is nothing you can do yeah whereas like outdoors it's so much about like finding the best beta and learning the moves and stuff like this do you like uh like the boards very much or are you not a fan let's say i almost hated them some years ago now i realized yes they are they are more efficient tools than I could imagine. I think still maybe like just a wooden board with bad feet is maybe better as like, especially can moon board ball problems tend to be just like one move yeah. cruxes. And like the rest is just like intro and outro. Kilter board is a little bit bigger, big, bigger and that's why I feel it's much better. Uh, but it still mostly revolves around like one hard move and the rest is intro and the rest is out outro. Uh, but still, I think mixing it up with a nice spray wall, uh, which is both physical and technical at the same time, and with a little bit of board climbing is probably the right, the right mixture for, for everyone. Yeah, I've seen some of the videos where you do spray wall sessions and you, you do make it look a little bit more fun, but I think some yeah. of that's your experience that like you know how to make a good boulder on a spray wall whereas when i try it i'm always <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's different because if you if you grow up as in my generation that's that's the only thing you knew you know fair yeah it's like it took forever before like boulders based on a color would appear in the gym yeah by the time i started it was already it was so common and uh it was so yeah, streamlined yeah, yeah. i was like this is awesome <laughs> i i can't believe i didn't know about this but it didn't exist when i was younger which is why i didn't know about it yeah yeah well uh thank you for coming on i won't keep you too long it's just awesome getting to just talk to you and stuff it's a uh, definitely did not think when i started climbing a few years ago i'd actually get a chance to talk to you 
ever really so cool. i really appreciate it again keep having fun with your channel and maybe at the crack bye Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video and big thanks to Adam Andra for joining me on my channel. If you want to check out his course, here's the link and I'll post it in the description as well so you guys can check it out. It's coming out pretty soon. It's going to be pretty exciting. Pretty cool stuff. Bye.